Captain Sumchappers. Excuse me, I'm the Captain. <laughs> oh look, we got the little tiny baby cousin of my guitar. Hello. And um, they look really nice together, don't they? Yeah, so you guys might remember that back in 2016, uh, we were demoing some guitars called ES Les Pauls, which are really, in terms of construction, closer to a 335 than they are to a Les Paul, but they look more like a Les Paul than a 335. And the bulk of the ES Les Paul ha is, a, is a semi-hollow guitar, so solid down the middle, okay, hollow on the other okay. side. Uh, with F holes like these have, but they did a limited edition run uh, called the uh, well, essentially an ES an ES Les Paul, but with no F holes. That Rob mm. fell in love, and he oh, it was an immediate acquisition. It was without any kind yeah. of restraints. I had no control over my physical body. Money was spent. Yeah, so he bought the guitar. He named it Georgia. He named it Georgia after a. <laughs> um, which is Absolutely why. Absolutely untrue. Which is why I named it Georgia because <laughs> because it's the Memphis. Yes, and that's so it. anyway. So he's had that guitar, and then and then uh, you can't say that because the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put it in the f hole. <laughs> um, and anyway, towards the back end of 2016, I spotted in the uh, Epiphone range that they'd essentially done an Epiphone version of the ES Les Paul, which is cool. So they've called this the ES Pro Epiphone Les Paul or Epiphone Les Paul ES Pro, and it's. Pretty similar in, you know, it's, it's again, it's more like a 335 than it is a Les Paul. So it's a maple laminate construction. Um, Pro Bucker pickups, um, 24 and three quarter inch scale length with, you know, mahogany neck and a, and a rosewood board. So I guess, you know, well, no, that's, that's still kind of 335-ish. Um, the, well, the real sonic difference with a guitar like this that I discovered is that when you crank it up and put just the right amount of gain and the right amount of volume, is you get some really interesting feedback. Yeah, feedback because the days. hollow body is giving yeah. you that kind of vibe. Gibson knowledge isn't detailed enough to know whether or not this is a, a copy of something Gibson have done or whether this is a, a, a slightly new thing. But this isn't, this, the center block on the ES Pro doesn't go the full length of the body. So it, I'm just sort of looking in here, it stops about an inch behind the tailpiece. So here is completely uh, hollow. So, so you can kind of hear that's, that's all yeah, hollow. More, more air, more better. So, so you've got kind of solid here and it does, it hugely weight relieves the guitars. I mean, the, these are kind of the same, these are like the weight of an acoustic guitar, basically, yeah. aren't they? They're, they're really not what you'd expect one to be. Now, here's my moan at uh, Gibson and Epiphone. Please, if you're watching this, take note. These guitars are supplied kind of, what do I want to call this, like retail ready. So they have stickers all over them saying what the pickups are and what these switches do. If, and they've got a little like QR code on the scratch plate. And honestly, I think it's, until you take all it that really, stuff off, it looks tacky. It takes away from the whole yeah. view, and I think so, the customer doesn't get, look at that, that's a beautiful so, guitar. You don't need stickers to, to say I it's know. a great guitar. So these are all, if you want information about the guitar, stick it on the swing tag at the top, people will work it out, yeah. and then just let the guitar be beautiful. Yeah, man, or, or right on the controls like you do here, rhythm yeah. and treble, so, so that, they know what it is. You know, that's a minor thing, but again, as soon as you buy one of these, take all the, I've left the stickers on this one, just to, to sort of show, I, I took the QR code off. But yeah, take them off, take them off and just let the guitar be beautiful. So Pro Buckers in the, the pickups here. Um, let me give you, 
some clean tones from this guitar. There's three colors, by the way, this beautiful faded cherry burst here, the trans black that I'm playing, and a wine red that Rory will put on the screen. Oh, I just dropped my plectrum. I'll get another one. Um, he'll put on the screen just about Beep. now. Um, Beep. So here we go, neck pickup. And that was the bridge pickup. I can coil tap them, which essentially, if you don't know what that means, means I'm kind of reducing the output of the humbucker to sound a bit more like a single coil. So here's full fat uh, humbucker mode. And then coil tapped. And I can do that to both pickups. So here's my bridge pickup. You got all the tone controls just like you'd have on any other Gibson. Um, and it's definitely, it doesn't sound like a Les Paul, does it? No, it's got a completely unique voice to it, which is really nice. You know, it's a really pleasant sounding uh, musical instrument. And what, one of the reasons I fell in love with my ESLP is because when you pick it up, I started to play riffs. Yeah. And uh, I started, it was a writing instrument for me. And I really enjoy that about the hollow body quality. Um, so yeah, it just, it just got me, you know, writing all sorts of... Sort of um, more chordally yeah. was, was the thing for me. In fact, I wrote... Uh, And I mean, if, if, yeah. we, if we turn all the volume down on the guitars, I mean, this is quite a lot louder than a. It's got a thing, it's but quite a lot louder than a solid. It still isn't it? does take the gain, which yes. I will show. But not you don't want to give it like crazy, crazy gain. But but check check this. <laughs> Now, certainly historically, one of the things you do have to be a bit careful with, with hollow body guitars, although center block guitars are much less likely to be a problem, but completely hollow guitars. If someone um, runs on stage, don't try and hit them with it. No, it's it, you do get sort of slightly uncontrollable feedback at volume, but this doesn't seem too bad, I Let's guess. Let's do it's that sort of... test, shall we? Beer, I'm going to play really loudly. Okay. Sorry, have you got your earphones on? Yeah. Okay, so all the volume, <laughs> high some of the gain. This is really loud. And let's just take a listen to how it would sound um, if I... Ready? Yeah. Okay, full volume, Red Dwarf, through, full 12. <laughs> Thank you. 
That wasn't a problem feedback, was it? No, I was being very careful to meet all the unwanted and idle treble strings with my right hand. Yeah. But it's, I mean, and I'm really close to this amp, and that was loud. Yeah. So it's not that bad. So what else can we tell you? It's pretty tidy, you know, tidy, like a, looks like it's probably built in the same factory that make all of the, you know, the, the normal Epiphone, Les Pauls, standard plus tops. Um, yeah, it's nice, tidy, really lightweight, unusual sound, not unusual sounding, but you know, different sounding. Uh, I don't think it sounds particularly like a 335 either. I think it sounds <coughs> more hollow. It's kind of got, it's got its own thing really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. but. It's, 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 um, what's the right word when something's not Unique. heavy enough? Oh, not heavy enough. Yeah, where it's almost, it almost feels like it's not been made of good things because it's just too light. I don't mean that, that that's probably come across wrong. I don't mean it feels cheap. I just mean as in it's dis it's just weird. It's not how you expect it to be. Yeah, because you, look at, you look at the shape. You look at the fact that it's a guitar and you think, oh, it's it's going to be less Paul weighted. No, it's not. It's but not, then it's still, you, you could you could easily pick it up with two fingers. It's still balanced nicely. I mean, it doesn't. It's not neck heavy or anything, is it? it no. Still wants to sort of go the right way. You know what? It's a unique sounding instrument. It's really cool. You're not going to put your MGs in it and, and play no, a bit of Metallica, no, 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 no. but you want you still can play like Queens of the Stone Age, yeah. kind of dirty, crunchy stuff on it. I love my full fat version to pieces. Yeah. And um, I, I, think recommend... a lot of, I think a lot of guys will, will buy this who maybe just struggle, you know, with back problems and stuff and quite like the idea of having a Les Paul, but just don't want something quite so heavy. Yeah. Um, but I have to say tidy construction, very yeah. tidy. Yeah, it's not you bad. Know, for, for an affordable Chinese made Epiphone, yeah. really tidy construction. It's not expensive. These are 450 pounds. Um, uh, of money, four, not four fifty to five hundred pounds, something like that. So there you go. I want to jam out with something where I can use a distortion pedal. Okay, I'll play some basic blues. Great. Do you play some dirty filth? I certainly will. <laughs> Rob Chapman. And I've been El Capitan. Take it easy and goodbye. Tell me about Rory. So he uh, edits videos. Rory's awesome. Yeah!